Hey everyone, Brian Marino here with Apex Software, and in today's video I want to go over the legacy drawing style. Um, for any of you longtime Apex users, you're probably familiar with this drawing style. It was the way version 5 and earlier worked, um, and version 7 gives the ability to sketch in that way as well. And what that means is um, you draw one area at a time, when you go into draw mode you're going to specify what area you're drawing before you draw it and when you close that area it's going to automatically calculate it. The way you can tell whether or not you're in the modern or the legacy drawing style if you're in legacy you are not going to have a define area icon above your text icon. So in modern style you have an icon that looks like a house above the text icon if you're using legacy you don't have that icon. If you want to switch between modes or change from one to the other, if you come to Tools and go to Options, uh, at the top of the General tab we have Modern or Legacy here. So Modern, draw everything, then define. Legacy, define the area first, draw it and close it for it to calculate. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I want to stay in the Legacy mode. And let me go back to the Home tab. Okay, so to get started drawing in the legacy drawing style, you're going to click on the draw area icon here on the left and you will get a define area panel. I'm going to go ahead and select first floor as the area type that I want to draw. If you wanted to change the name from say first floor to like main floor or something, you can type in a name here and change it and it will apply that. Another thing to point out in the at the bottom of the define area panel here under auto post, this is what will post inside of the area when you close it. So the, the name, dimensions, and calcs are what are selected by default. So the name would be, in this case, first floor would post in the middle. Dimensions are the dimension labels on each wall. So it's basically going to leave it how you create it when, when you have it set to leave as is. If you wanted them always to be on the outside or the inside, you can actually come here and specify where you want them and what it'll do is when you close that area it'll automatically pop them all to the inside or the outside depending on what you have set and then finally calcs is the square footage so if you want the square footage to post in the middle of the area when you close it have calcs checked if you don't uncheck calcs but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it to the default settings and click the apply button and now I'm ready to draw so I have a crosshair I'm ready to start sketching. If I wanted to cancel, like let's say, up, oh, you know what, I didn't want to draw that, I can hit the escape key on my keyboard and it'll ask me, do you want to cancel the area you're drawing? I'm going to click no, but if you click yes, it'll basically start you over and you can click back on draw area and pick a different area type. So I'm going to go ahead and tap enter and the way you sketch is the same in any drawing style. So it doesn't matter if we're in modern legacy. The way you draw is the same. Type in the distance, tap the direction, tap enter. Now with the legacy drawing style by default, you do have to hit enter a second time to place the dimension label. Um, the reason for that is, let's say I wanted to move this label down here. I can place the label where I want it while I'm drawing and it, that's where it'll be. And if, let's say I had a label I didn't want to post, I can hit the delete key and delete that label and continue on without having it. So I'm going to go through with this set to having to hit enter two times but if you prefer to not hit enter twice and you just wanted to use one enter if you come up to tools options go to dimensions and check auto placement right here you'll only have to hit enter one time but I'm gonna leave it in the style it's in so that I can give some tips on how to use that if you have that style set so I'm going to continue on and I'm going to kind of fast forward through drawing the area because most people know how to sketch. If you don't, um, check out the version 7 Get It Started video and that will give you some tips on how to uh, sketch uh, in more detail this exact sketch I'm drawing right now. Okay, now this is a good place to show how the auto placement versus the manual placement of dimensions is handy. I'm going to go ahead and add in a bay window here. So I'm going to go two down and then I'm going to go two left and then I'm going to tap enter. Well that label is overlapping that one foot so I could move it to the inside of the wall but I'm just going to hit delete and I'm not going to post that label. I'm going to move over this way now and I'm going to draw the six foot line, tap enter and then I'm going to tap B on my keyboard and then I'm going to tap enter and place the label on that one 
and then I'll go one foot left and I'll tap delete and then we'll go 15 up all right so you see how much cleaner that looks I don't have overlapping labels I'm not gonna have to go back later and delete them so that's the reasoning for being able to do that so that you can kind of clean things up as you're sketching and you don't have to go back later and adjust it um, I just want to show that real quickly I'm gonna go ahead and speed it back up now and continue alright and you'll notice now that the area is closed it automatically calculated it and it gave me the square footage so once you close that area it closes it out and it automatically calculates so now let's say we want to add a patio on the top right I'm gonna go ahead and center and fit this and blow it up a little bit okay so let's say we want to add a patio up here now I'm gonna go back over to draw area I'm gonna select patio in my list I'm gonna tap the apply button and then I'll go ahead and jump my cursor to the corner, tap enter, and we'll go six right. We'll come 10 down, 10 over. Come back down. All right, now this is where it's different than the modern drawing style. We have to trace all these lines back to where we started. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly trace these. You probably don't want two 10 foot labels, one on each side of the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap delete, get rid of that one. Tap delete, get rid of that one. So basically I'm doing control direction and then I'm deleting the label. And then we'll do A to auto close the last area and I'll delete the label. All right, so now that area is drawn, defined and calculated and we have that area done. All right, now let's say, you know, we drew the footprint of the first floor, but we actually have a garage right here that we don't want included in the first floor. So we need to subtract that garage square footage from this first floor. So the way we're going to do that, I'm going to come back over to draw area. I'm going to go down and find garage. And then I'm going to come down right here where it says auto subtract. And I'm going to do subtract from the gross, the GLA one, the first floor. So I'm going to pick the area that I want this area I'm about to draw to subtract from. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to go ahead and jump to this corner. Tap enter and I'm going to go 12 feet up. We'll go 20 right. We'll come back down. I'm going to go ahead and tap delete because I don't need that 20 there. And then I'll do X. Delete. I don't need two 20s. And then I'll tap A and then I'll tap delete because I don't need that duplicate dimension and now the garage is calculated you'll notice our square footage of our first floor has now adjusted so we were able to quickly um, draw that garage and subtract it from the first floor all at one time so that's how you can subtract one area from another you'll typically run into that if you're drawing the full footprint of the first floor or the whole building and then you need to subtract out the garage that's how you could do that uh, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and move this over and I'm going to add another area over here on the right. Let's say there's a second floor and I'm just going to kind of make this shape up because really I want to use this to show you how to reopen an area and make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that and then A. All right, and there's a second floor. So let's say we forgot to add maybe a bay window on the right side of where the 26 foot wall is so we need to reopen this area and make a change um, the way you're going to reopen an area in legacy drawing style uh, is click the line you want to reopen at I'm going to tap the delete key on my keyboard and it's going to delete that that wall once I've deleted that one wall don't if you do need to delete more walls don't click them and delete them I would recommend delete one wall go back into draw Okay, when you go back into draw mode, it put my cursor at the end of that 23 foot wall there. So if I wanted to, I could say delete back, delete back. Let's say that 12 foot wall should have been 15 up. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 15 up, tap enter, enter, and then I'm just going to hit the insert key to insert the other lines that I deleted back in so that I don't have to redraw them. So technically I can delete, 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 insert, 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 insert and it will delete and insert walls the same way version 5 did it okay so on this wall um, we need to add our bay window in so I'm gonna go let's see we'll go we'll go 11.5 down enter uh, we'll go 2 2 down enter 
six down, enter. I'll tap B for bay window, and then I'll tap A to auto close it, and then tap enter. And you'll notice it recalculated the area when I closed it. That is important. Make sure if you reopen an area, you make some changes. Make sure you hit A on that last wall to reclose it. That way you know it's closed for sure and you should see the calculation show back up in the middle of the area. Okay, so we just quickly added in a bay window by deleting the wall, adding lines, and then reclosing the area. So that's how you would reopen an area in the legacy drawing style. Um, other than that, every other feature should work the same as it does in modern. So, like I said, you can watch the um, Apex version 7 getting started video we have on the channel if you want some more tips on how to do other things in the program. I just wanted to get this video out to give those legacy users a few tips on how to create areas, subtract existing areas, and also reopen and edit areas. I hope y'all found this helpful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. If you know anyone this would help, feel free to like, share, subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch y'all in the next one.